a dream I know Deep up my feelings for you my wonderful people welcome back to my wonderful channel reality letters gc home of news and politics thank you so much for joining us on today's wonderful news my people the matter what i can record given a month of bubble the governor elect don't come raise an alarm over alleged offer basic's request for supplementary budget moving on after this we have governor godino basically said that his administration has built on the legacy of his founding fathers. But my people, before I go bring the main gist, I would like to welcome all my amazing subscribers and viewers. Thank you so much for joining. But if today now your first time to join Reality Letters Gist, you are highly welcome. Kindly proceed to subscribe and also share. But don't forget to turn the notification bell to get notified whenever we drop a video. All right, my people, make a yarn on the inventory. The governor elect of Edo State, Netomondo Obolo, has raised an alarm over the alleged plan by the outgoing government of Governor Gordon Obasigi for a supplementary budget, barely two weeks to the end of the administration. <laughs> My people, there was a report that Prince Kashima Febwai, a member of the APC Transition Committee, raised the alarm on Tuesday in the statement he made available to the newsmen in Benin City. So, Febwai opined that with the development, the outgoing government was leaving an empty treasury for the incoming government to work. He however added that the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, Blessing Nebubako, turned down Governor Gordon Obasiki's request of the supplementary budget. So he said that the State House of Assembly has shortly before the gubernatorial election of September 21st, 2024, given express approval to a 450 billion supplementary request of the governor, despite criticism of members of the public. So he alleged that in total, Governor Gordon Obasiki has spent a total of 1.5 trillion in his eight years as governor, with no improvement or development of roads. He went for a small passport. So from my side, despite plundering 1.5 trillion in the past seven years with no visible legacy infrastructure on ground across Edo State, he said now again Governor Gordon Obasiki has requested a supplementary budget with two weeks to hand over of power. So the request for the approval of the supplementary budget was submitted to the State House of Assembly on Monday 28th, October 2024, setting that he intend to leave money for the incoming governor, Senator Mondo Obolo, to spend while settling down to work. But surprisingly, like the radio of the sudden turn of events, the Speaker of the House of Assembly, Honorable Blessing Nebubaku, has turned down the request of Gono Gono Basagi even in his trying times. My people are very doing end there. Kasima Febai went ahead to say that before now, that Governor Gono Basagi had presented three supplementary budgets to the House of Assembly, which they were all promptly approved, either in the government house at several hours and mostly without the knowledge of the other members. Why sympathizing with the incoming administration of Senator Mondo Ulu? He said Edo people are, however, excited that the state has been rescued from a democratic tyrant. The Edo people are aware that Senator Mondo Ulu will inherit an empty treasury, but they are happy that he will represent a new dawn which was translated as a new Edo is rising during the last campaign across the state. So, Febwe said, Inu Nase, agent of Governor Gono Basiki has turned their frustration into a looting spree because they have descended on vehicles, air conditioners, generator, television sets, and many other, which they are looting with careless abandon. So, he said, Edo State has been lucky in terms of allocation, but unlucky characters at the helm of affairs have stifled growth and development. So the state received so many billions of naira from the 13 derivation fund, but there is nothing to justify such huge resources. Hey, my people don't be so wild out. I feel my went ahead to say that when his government wants to loot, that they tie expenditure on recurrent subhead, which they draw to the last whole number. So they have found it worrisome that a governor elect who mean well for the people will be inheriting an empty treasury with a huge debt of over 500 billion hanging on their nose. How do they expect the state to grow? <laughs> My people don't be so well now. Everybody said, he no say, a do now is bleeding profusely as a result of neglect, financial malfeasance, and careless abandon. <laughs> My people don't be so well now. You people will remember when Chris Nekari, the State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, had in a recent press conference that Obasiki led government we end on November 12, 2024. So he urged the APC 
the governor elect to wait to assume office as governor first before performing their duties as governor that they should wait till November 12th when he will be sworn in <laughs> as governor before he go start to carry out the duty. Because right now, two governors cannot be in a state. The assistance now, Governor Gordon Obasiki is still in charge. My people don't be so well out. So my people are going like me on a chook mat for this matter. Make I know it and I think about this matter in our comment section. Let's keep it lively in our comment section. Once again, thank you all so much for staying to us. Moving on to the next one. The Edo State Governor Gordon Obasiki on Tuesday said that the remodeling of the Nigeria Observer newspaper is the determination of his administration to build on the legacy of the founding fathers. Obasiki disclosed this during the commissioning of the newspaper in Benin, where he said that newspapers have been stable where current notable media owners began their trade and they were still very relevant in the country. So he said his administration has been able to turn the fortune of the establishment around with the installation of state-of-the-art printing facilities, adding that his aim is to make it a formidable media hub in the country. So his administration has put everything in place to keep the establishment afloat. The State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, Chris Nikari, while speaking on the Chronicles of the Nigeria Observer as of today, he said that the newspaper was betted on May 29, 1968, with copies of the newspaper appearing on newsstand across Nigeria. So the, going down memory lane, they can say that the Nigeria Observer, one of the legacy projects of the late Brigadier General Dr. Samuel Osabovo, Umbemudia, military governor of Midwest State and Bender State, is a response to the genuine demand of people who increasingly began to feel that they need some outlet for the articulation of their own idea with emphasis to inform, educate and entertain. So Chris Negari said that the Nigeria Observer was then a training ground for most successful journalists in the country who later moved to other national newspapers and magazines. So today, they are media owners. He said that the winding fortune of the establishment were due to poor funding. So these and other reasons were the thing that drew the attention of Governor Gordon Obasiki to this essential service sector of the communication industry in the state. The Commissioner for Communication said that veteran and media gurus, including former staff of the establishment, have been inducted into the Nigeria Observer Hall of Fame. And they include the former Director General of the Nigeria Television Authority, Tony Iridia, the founder of Channel TV, Tony Momo, the founder of this day newspaper and Arise television and former staff of nigeria observer ndoka obedanya veren broadcaster sonny irabo founder of business day newspaper frank ahibogu founder of the tail magazine nusa egebo and pioneer general manager of midwest newspaper limited publisher of the nigeria observer abiodo loba and so many other persons so, guys, I would like to know your thoughts, your contributions, your opinions in our comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Once again, thank you so much for staying to us.